Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Central Europe. I hope everybody is having a fantastic week so far, staying healthy, staying strong and productive. Welcome to this class of speaking for the IELTS exam. Uh, we are focusing on speaking part one and I will explain to you what exactly is a band nine in the speaking section and we are going to practice that with some original questions today. Uh, welcome, football and jokes, Harinder Singh. Good to see uh, some uh, students in the class already. Hi, Abhishek. Hi, Nick Hill. Welcome, members. Good to see you as well, Shub Sharat. Students, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Definitely visit us there for the general IELTS. Visit us at gieltshelp.com on both of our websites. We have lots and lots of help for you to improve your speaking, your writing, reading, listening skills, and to get higher band scores. Basically, everyone who uses our websites for about a month before your exam, of course, you need to use them every day for at least a few hours if you can, uh, you will improve your band scores. We guarantee that, okay? This is our Academic IELTS website here. You can click that big red button to join the premium package and our general IELTS website is the same layout but with the green background. You can use our websites on your phone, mobile um, or on the computer and of course we have apps uh, that connect to the websites as well so you can learn from your My Student account anywhere you are. Uh, when you log into your My Student account up here you can find other students to practice your speaking with for free. I'll show you that real quick and just darken up our screen here. So if you go into your My Student account, um, then you will find our computer-based practice exams, our um, lesson videos in HD, audio CDs, and then here you will also find the uh, student partner speaking. By the way, a new feature, you will see this QR code. You can put your phone on that QR code to download the app and link it as well. Um, and then if you go to student partner speaking, uh, it will open up another page and you will find uh, other students in there. Um, at the moment, somebody is calling me. It's Guzalia. Guzalia, I can't talk right now because I'm hosting a live class, but thanks for calling me. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Guzalia, uh, try somebody else, okay? Um, and, but you can see some other students in here as well, of course, because as soon as I got in here, uh, people can see that I'm online too. So here's Banu, here's Usman and Shub Sharat. Uh, so you can contact those people, Guzalia. Um, so there's always somebody in here uh, and you can video chat and audio chat. So check that out. Okay. All right. Yeah. Can't, uh, can't do speaking and do a live class. So, but next time. All right, so that's uh, free for everyone to use in your My Student account. Just showing you that resource. It's absolutely valuable. And you have the same uh, in the general IELTS version as well. Uh, in fact, the student partner speaking links between the two websites. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, so use these websites to help you prepare for the exam. Okay, all right, let's get into our lesson a little bit more deeply. Um, if anybody has questions, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com about the IELTS or about our products, I'm happy to help. Of course, you can get our exam books from Amazon, AE Helps Academic IELTS or G Helps General IELTS. And we have lots of uh, lessons for you this week, today, tomorrow, Friday, and Saturday. Okay. Uh, let's get into some speaking. So the topic for today that I titled this lesson is what is a band nine? Okay. Um, a band nine means that uh, you can speak fluently. You can give great answers. You have good communication skills. You rarely, rarely ever make mistakes. And if they, if you do make mistakes for a band nine, they have to be natural mistakes. So when you hear me speaking, giving these lectures, I'm sure sometimes you hear me making some mistakes as well, but they're kind of natural. I mean, it's nobody really speaks perfectly. There's no such 
concept as perfect speech, okay? Um, there's just um, expert level speech, and that's that's the that's the definition of a band nine. It's an expert user of the English language. It's not a native user and it's not a perfect English, okay? So everybody keep that in mind for uh, band nine. When you're thinking about band nine, according to the IELTS, a band nine is an expert user of English, okay? It's not a native. user or speaker and it is not a perfect English user, okay? Uh, the people at IELTS, they're smart and they know that there is no such a concept as perfect English user and there's no such a concept really as a native user as well in some sense because there are so many different forms of English out there. Uh, again, IELTS is not an ESL exam. It is an English proficiency exam, okay? Keep that in mind. So IELTS is not an ESL exam. It's not an English as a second language exam, okay? Uh, it is an English proficiency exam, okay? It's a very important difference, right? A lot of students think that IELTS is an ESL exam and they get surprised when they hear that native English speakers also take the IELTS exam. So if you're a native English speaker, you're born in Canada or the UK, and you didn't pass your grade 12 English class and you want to do university, you can take the IELTS exam uh, instead of finishing your grade 12 English and prove your English proficiency, okay? All right. Um, so, uh, importantly, students, this is a speaking class, so make sure to speak lots, okay? Uh, speak and repeat, and in the chat, uh, make sure to use English only, okay? Uh, be smart. If you're here to practice English, use English. If you're not here to practice English, maybe find another place where you can chit-chat, okay? All right, you know who you are. Manpreet, Sahil, thinking of you and a few others, okay? All right, um, so let's get into uh, some questions for the speaking, and I will give you more instructions and tips about how to be uh, an expert uh, speaker of English as we move along, okay? All right, so um, you go to your IELTS exam. You get there um, a little bit early, so you get there uh, about... Um, an hour early, okay? And then uh, you uh, practice your speaking. You find other people who are there waiting for their uh, exam, and you ask them to practice uh, English with you so that you can warm up, okay? Um, and uh, don't be shy. Take some out speaking questions uh, with you. Okay, all right, um, and if the first person says, well, no, I don't want to practice with you, I'm already nervous enough, um, then don't panic, uh, find somebody else, okay, and um, ask them, okay, it helps you to build confidence as well. Now, you'll get called into the exam room, and by the way, uh, because of COVID, there are a lot of interesting uh, changes happening uh, to the, um, the speaking section of the IELTS exam. So uh, they're doing the exam with face masks. Also, they're putting like a glass shield between you and the examiner. And um, now they're also testing remote speaking, so through the computer. You still have to go into the test center. Uh, you get a headset, you get a good connection, uh, and you're not in the same room as the examiner, but you're speaking through uh, a computer. So they're testing that system. Uh, some of you who registered for your IELTS exam, make sure you check uh, notifications. They might send you a notification that says um, you have a practice speaking session. Okay, has anybody got that? Okay, so keep that in mind. That's kind of an important news I wanted to share with you today as well. So 
Uh, IELTS is testing a new system for speaking, which is through uh, video chat at a test center, but you are not in the same room as the examiner. Okay, and keep in mind that many students are getting notifications from IELTS uh, to do two speaking interviews. The first is just a trial. You do not get marks. Okay. So um, has anybody experienced this? So this is something new. Okay. Um, AJ Kumar says, yeah, me. Um, Janiel says, okay. All right. So, and of course, in this case, you don't have to use a mask. Yeah, IELTS knows that people are having trouble with the mask. Uh, so that's why they're setting up this new system, okay, through the computer. Now, uh, of course, you should still practice lots of face-to-face. -face. Uh, if COVID suddenly um, starts to uh, get solved, then there's a good chance that IELTS will go back to the face-to-face -face speaking. So, importantly, you have to practice both your face-to-face -face and um, video chat speaking, okay? So, important message from me, yours truly. Um, practice both face-to-face uh, with mask on and video uh, chat speaking for your IELTS. I know it's a little bit of a crazy world out there today uh, or these days, but that's just the way it is, okay? Um, Ayush, I think for the video chat, you do not need to wear a mask, okay? Right? Um, it, Z, it is not going to be from home. It's in kind of like a special room, I believe. Okay? So lots of changes going on. Uh, pay attention to that. We're trying to find out as much information as it's happening also. Okay, so that important administrative note aside, um, you are going to be um, with your examiner video chat or face to face and the examiner still might ask you even if you're in video chat um, can you show me your identification or may I see your identification okay and you have to have a good nice clear fluent answer for this um, young I am a native Canadian North American if you will okay all right, um, so uh, let's start to warm up. Again, this is speaking, so make sure to speak and repeat. Uh, I know young uh, coach or coach uh, from maybe Uzbekistan is curious here. I am speaking West Coast Canadian, Vancouver, Victoria uh, style of English, um, similar to Seattle, San Francisco, and so on, okay? All right, um, so... Uh, Warm-up questions, they will meet and greet you. Make sure that you are fluent and clear here. If you are not fluent and clear during the first few questions when you're introducing yourselves, uh, there's basically no way to get a band nine because, of course, an expert user of the English language would have no trouble at all clearly introducing themselves to a stranger or another person. Okay? All right. Uh, Roshni, yes, even for the video chat, definitely have your identification there with you. Uh, there's a chance that you will uh, show it when you sit down uh, to use the machine, and they might ask you to show it again during the video chat. Okay, I'm not sure as these kinds of rules are continuously changing right now. So definitely have your ID with you, Roshni, no matter uh, what context you're in. Okay. All right. Uh, let's get into it. So. This is the question we're starting with. Uh, may I see your identification? Okay. All right. Shaikh says, yes, please. Here it is. Um, Shaikh, more natural is to say, yes, here it is. Please have a look. Okay. Yes, please. Here it is. A little bit awkward. 
Okay. Uh, Carolina says, yes, here's my ID that I used to register for this exam. Please have a look. Okay, Carolina, that's good. It's nice and fluent. Victor says, yes, of course. Here's my ID passport. Uh, we wouldn't say ID passport. We would either say ID or passport or my driver's license. We wouldn't double up on it. Okay, so uh, yes, uh, here is my passport that I used to register for the exam. Nick Hill says, certainly here's my passport that I used to register for the exam. Please have a look. Yeah, so uh, yes, of course. Here is my driver's license that I used as my ID when I registered for the exam. Please take a look. In Canada, your driver's license it can be used, of course, as your national ID and in many other places as well. So um, here's another different way to respond to this if you're using your driver's license and it's considered a national um, official uh, picture ID. So question, repeat, okay, repeat, three, two, one. May I see your identification? Yes, of course, here's my driver's license that I used as my ID when I registered for the exam please have a look. Okay, and then you give it to them, give it to the examiner, and then the examiner will say, okay, um, me, or sorry, what is your full name? So they will match uh, your name with what they see on the ID, and yes, you should always say the name that's on your ID. If you have a long name, some people who are Arabic, some people who are Spanish, have long names, they have four, five names, uh, and if they're all on your passport or your national ID card, then say all of those names. Yeah, absolutely, okay? Gives you more credibility. Um, so don't, uh, don't cut out any of your names, all right, that are on your ID. If it's not on your ID, then don't say it because then it can be confusing, okay? Uh, Janil Gabani says, my full name is Janil Gabani, but please just call me uh, Janil. Or, but please call me Janil. That's okay, Janil. Yeah, that, that works. Okay, nice and fluent. Harsh says, I want to give you an, in I want to give you an interview, sir. I can't do it, Harsh. I can't interview you, unfortunately. Uh, Nick Hill says, my given name is Nick Hill and my family name is Paste. Please just call me Nick Hill. Very good. Navneet says, uh, my full name is Navneet Kaur. Uh, please call me Navneet. Jacob says, my first name is Nikita. Uh, surname is Zakharov. Uh, but you may call me Nick, as my mates do. All right. That works. So that's your nickname. Yeah. Mates is okay. Mates is quite Aussie for friend. Carolina says, my full name is Carolina Asano, as you can see in my passport. Please just call me Carolina. Sure. Rajveer says, my given name is Rajveer. My family name is Singh. Please call me uh, Rajveer. Yeah. So um, my given name is Jacob, and my family name is Sanders. Uh, please... Just call me Jake. Okay. Uh, repeat after me. What is your full name? My given name is Jacob and my family name is Sanders. Please just call me Jake. Okay. Now, when you give a descriptive answer like this, make sure you're fluent. I know that some examiners are really impatient. So if they ask you what is your full name and they don't hear you say Jacob Sanders, uh, please call me Jake. Uh, then they'll interrupt you. But they won't interrupt you if you're fluent, okay? If you fluently say, my given name is Jacob and my family name is Sanders, please just call me Jake, there's no way that they can interrupt you when you're being that fluent. And when you're giving your name, you should be that fluent, okay? You shouldn't be getting stuck on what you want to say. It's not a thinker. You don't think when you answer this kind of question. It's automatic, okay? All right. Uh, so now the examiner will say, okay, uh, now we'll ask you a couple more questions to get to know you better. 
and some questions on a general topic. This is part one. They're looking for paraphrasing. They're looking for good grammar. They're looking for detailed answers that are on topic. Uh, they're looking for clear communication, okay? And that's what you need to do to get a band nine. So um, they might ask you something like, how did you come to this exam? Okay, it's kind of a nice warm-up question. And most people who have a, at least an intermediate level of English should be able to give a good answer without having to think too much, okay? Onur, Akol, thank you so much for coming back and sharing. Onur says, Onur, sorry, Onur says, uh, hey, thank you for your great effort. I want to thank you so much. I got my results, overall band seven. Your videos are fascinating. Best of luck, everyone. Thank you, Anur, and good uh, job on your exam. A band seven means you are a good user of the English language, and that's fantastic. According to the European levels, that's a solid uh, B2 moving to C1 level, and you should be proud of that. Good luck in your next steps. Very nice. Okay. Um, Sunny Sarani says, I took a bus at 4.30 a.m. from my city to arrive at 6.30 uh, due to the exam time, which was starting at 7.45. Okay, Sunny, I like your quantitative use of information. So you took a bus. Um, how did you get to this exam? So you got here by bus. Maybe explain where you came from. I mean, it's a two-hour bus ride. It's quite, quite a distance that you must have traveled to get to the exam, maybe from another city. Okay. Rajveer says, I rode my motorbike to get to this venue and it took me about 30 minutes. Okay, don't double up, Rajveer. So um, to reach this venue, to reach here, unnecessary. Just keep it simple, Rajveer. I rode my bike, motorbike, sorry. I rode my motorbike to reach this venue and it took me about 30 minutes or half an hour. Okay, that's it, All right? It was quick, convenient, easy parking, right, Rajveer? It's the advantages of motorbikes. Shanem Shamra says, my brother just dropped me here uh, after driving about 5K from my home. Actually, he's heading uh, towards uh, his own way, but the exam venue was en route, so uh, he gave me a helping hand. Uh, Shanem, not bad. There's a couple of awkward um, language use mistakes there. Again, students don't make mistakes in these warm-up questions. Only answer what you know is fluent and clear. If you're making mistakes, even though you think the examiner's not marking you, in their head, they're marking you already, okay? In fact, introduction is very important because an examiner can get a very good idea of a person's English level from the way they introduce themselves, okay? So be really careful. Niha says, well, I came by bus because I live in the countryside and uh, there's a stop which is uh, near my home. It's conveniently located and it's comfortable for me to travel this way. Okay, Niha, same thing, all right? Be careful. So um, I rode a bus to this exam. There is a stop just outside my home and it took about half an hour to get here, okay? All right, repeat after me. How did you come to this exam? I rode a bus to this exam. There's a stop just outside my home and it took about half an hour to get here, okay? Seems really simple, but there are a lot of elements to this answer. Uh, simple past tense, okay? Um, here I have a simple coordinating conjunction and I'm joining sentence and sentence. It took about half an hour to get here. Quantitative language. Simple is beautiful, but it's not always easy. So you have to practice. Okay. All right. Next question. How will you go back home? Okay. So first question, how did you get here? You answer that nice and smoothly, fluently, using good language, and then um, it makes sense to ask, well, how will you go back home? Ferdov says, I will call a cab as after the exam, I will be tired and hungry, so it's the best choice. Nice response, Ferdov. It's original, it makes sense. There could be quite a bit of truth to that. 
uh, why not grab a cab, right? Um, especially if you're tired, you're feeling stressed as well after the exam, you're hungry, you just want to get home or get to a restaurant. Sure, grab a cab, okay? Um, and by the way, the verb is hail. If you stop the cab on the street, you hail the cab, okay? Um, which most of us don't do because most of us just use our phone with apps nowadays, like a Bolt cab. Uh, Abhishek says, well, the same way I will go home in my car. However, this time I will make a pit stop for buying groceries since I have organized a party for my parents on their Golden Jubilee anniversary. Okay, nice, Abhishek. So you're going to make a pit stop. Nice use of uh, language there. I believe pit stop does use a hyphen. You, you join those with a hyphen, pit dash stop. Okay. Uh, Juan Pablo says, after this exam, I think I'll walk for a while and do some window shopping on my way to the bus station. Then I'll just take the bus uh, to the bus stop closest to my home. Nice, Juan. Okay, Abhishek, Juan, really nice job on being natural uh, and using some good communication, right? That's the ticket. Uh, I can tell that you're staying calm and thinking while you're coming up uh, with these answers, okay? All right, Kowal says, well, I think the bus is the better option because I live in a rural area and um, the taxi would be really expensive uh, if uh, at all available, okay? So um, I will go back the same way as I came by bus as it is the most convenient and affordable transportation for me. However, before hopping on the bus, I plan to make a pit stop. Might even be one word. Yeah, uh, a pit stop at a restaurant for some grub. <laughs> there you go. Um, so Abhishek encouraging me to teach you some natural uh, expressions and idiomatic language. And that is useful to get those high band scores. So uh, in your band score description, if you look at it and it's open and available to everyone online, band nine, uh, speaking marking criteria, type that in and you will find uh, the answer quickly from Google. Um, so it says that for a band nine, you should be able to use some natural and idiomatic language. Now this doesn't mean you have to use like really complex idioms or proverbs in English, especially uh, with these longer idiomatic expressions. Be really careful. Okay. It's easy to make mistakes, uh, but you can use uh, language and you should use uh, language like um, hopping on the bus. Okay. So hop like a bunny, hop, hop, jump, jump. Um, we often say that I'm going to hop on a bus or hop in a cab. Okay. You hop in a cab, you hop on the bus. Um, so hop on the bus is a little bit of an idiomatic expression. Uh, and then to make a pit stop, uh, a pit stop um, comes from um, uh, race cars, okay? So if you're thinking Formula One or Indy 500, uh, when the car is going around and around the track and then um, they need to get more fuel or they need to change their tires, they go into the pit stop, okay? So it's the pit stop where the car will stop and then the pit crew will replace the tires, fill the gas, and then the car... Uh, is off to the races. So that's a pit stop. And we use that in everyday language as well. You make a pit stop, which means a quick stop somewhere to do something like grab groceries or some food. Um, and kind of a slang way to say food is grub. Grub. That might be a new one for some people. So I'm going to grab some grub. Grub is usually some very quick food like a sandwich, uh, maybe some fast food. Okay, that's grub. All right, so one more time. How will you go back home? I will go back the same way as I came by bus, as it is the most convenient and affordable transportation for me. However, before hopping on the bus, I plan to make a pit stop at a restaurant for some grub. Great. Okay. Sounds good. 
and the examiner will be like, well, okay, this person is definitely an expert user of English with this kind of vocabulary. Now, they will say something like, okay, let's talk about tables and chairs. How many chairs do you have in your home? And I know it sounds like a weird question, but IELTS sometimes does come up with these weirder questions. <coughs> so, excuse me. So they might ask you something like, how many chairs do you have in your home? Moria says, I have a total of eight chairs in my condo, which includes four dining chairs, two chairs by the sofa, and the other two uh, on my balcony. Not in my balcony, on my balcony, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. All right. All that talking made my throat a bit itchy. Un says, <clears throat> there are Let's see, wait a second. Okay, there's Un. So Un says, there are over 20 chairs in my home as my house is quite spacious. In the dining room, there are 10 chairs and the living room consists of five of them, not to mention some in the backyard. It's not bad on, a little bit confusing of where some of those chairs are, but you're on the right track. <clears throat> Stuti Shri says, there are nine chairs in my home. Uh, six of them are around the dining room table, uh, two at the study table for me and my brother, and one on the balcony where my father sits to read the morning newspaper. Okay. Some corrections there. My voice will come back in a moment, not to worry. Uh, Beck John says, uh, <clears throat> in my four-bedroom house, I have around seven chairs. Five of them are in the kitchen, and they are used for uh, eating. The other two are in the living room. Uh, all of them are made of wood and wool. Okay. Great. Hassan says, well, just give me a minute so I can count them. I think overall there are 12 chairs and two tables, one table uh, for coffee and the other uh, for dining. Uh, each table has six chairs. Okay, Hassan, not bad. You should just call the table as a coffee table. So there's a coffee table and a dining room table. Okay, or a dining table, right? So that's the actual name of those tables. Um, <clears throat> okay. Abhishek says, I guess six wooden chairs around the dinner table and six heavy plastic uh, chairs on the terrace where my family regularly sits twice a day and have our morning tea together. Okay, good. And then stop there, Abhishek, because after that you're going off topic. Okay. All right. Um, so... Yeah, I thought that was kind of clever what you said, Hassan. Uh, just give me a moment to count them up in my mind. Okay, and then maybe you'll take three seconds here. I guess uh, there's about nine chairs in my home. Uh, an office chair in the study, uh, six dining room chairs, and two foldable chairs on the balcony. Okay. All right. Uh, so here we go. Repeat after me. <clears throat> How many chairs do you have in your home? Uh, just give me a moment to count them up in my mind. I guess there's about nine chairs in my home, uh, an office chair in the study, six dining room chairs, and two foldable chairs on the balcony. 
Okay. Where are the tables in your home? Okay. Always pay attention to the question marker. Where are the tables in your home? Okay. Secure now. Good to see you in the class. Long time no see. Okay. I'll catch some of your responses. Just keep going. That one looks good about the chairs. Let's move to the next one. Okay. All right. Juan Pablo says, I have one table in the living room and one in the kitchen. Uh, they are useful for cooking and serving food. Uh, in the other rooms, I have a desk and some other furniture. Okay, Juan, good. The desk is still okay because it's sort of like a type of table, a study desk, okay? Um, but don't go off uh, talking about other types of furniture. So where are the tables, okay? So focus on the location in this case, all right? That's what's most important. Students always pay really attention to the type of question it is. So where means the location. Roshni says, hmm, oh gosh. Uh, one round glass table is uh, in the dining room and the other one is in the study uh, made of wood. Uh, so it's durable and I can study on it for long hours. It's uh, comfortable to write on, right? Wooden tables are comfy to write on. Okay. Michaela says, let's see, uh, we have a dining table with 20 chairs uh, for our big family. There's also three long sofas in our living room and two desks, including two, there are two chairs. Uh, Michaela, careful, careful, okay? This is where are tables, not where are sofas and chairs, all right? The examiner is really listening for how accurately you can answer these questions, and uh, that has a big impact on your band score. So to get a band nine, you really, really need to give accurate answers. So Rohit says, I have three tables. One of these is always in my room. Uh, it's my study table. The other one is in the kitchen. It's our dining room table. And the third one is in the living room uh, where uh, we sit to have discussions and uh, host guests. Okay, Rohit, good. All right. Now give examples as well whenever possible. All right. Okay. Jesseleen says, uh, seems every area in my home has a table. One in the living room, two side tables beside the bed, uh, in the bedroom, one in the study area, and a small table in the kitchen that my mom uses mostly for cutting up uh, food. All right. Z says, there are two tables in my home. One is in the living room where we keep the sweets when guests arrive. Another one is in my room, uh, which is the study table. Good. Okay. All right, good job. Uh, Mohammed. I can see that you're saying um, to speak a little bit louder. If anybody thinks I'm speaking a bit quietly, let me know, okay? All right? So, um, there are three tables in my home, not counting the two nightstands uh, beside besides beside my bed uh, one table is in the dining room there is a coffee table in the living room and a large uh, wood table in my office which I use for work all right um, so here we go. Repeat after me. Where are the tables in your room? There are three tables in my home, not counting the two nightstands beside my bed. One table is in the dining room. There's a coffee table in the living room and a large wood table in my office, which I use for work. Okay. Uh, stay on topic. Don't overcomplicate. Here I give lots of information for location. Okay. All right. Next question. Here we go. Uh, let's keep rolling. So which is your favorite chair and why? Okay, which is your favorite chair and why? Yarabisha says, the computer chair is my favorite one. I spend the whole day uh, working at my desk sitting in my computer chair. Although it's plastic, um, it's really convenient since the shape fits perfectly with my body. Thus, 
I can stay there for a long time. Uh, Yarbisha, there's a good word that you should use in your answer. It starts with an E. Second letter is an R. Think about what that word is. Okay, it's a very something chair. Starts with an E-R. Very er something chair. Ferdov says the black and white one is my favorite chair as it's made of natural leather and wood. Also, it's not only comfy, but has sentimental value as I inherited it from my father. Mm, okay, Ferdov's. Good. Uh, my lovely chair, a little bit awkward. My favorite chair. Okay. All right. Let's see. So, Ali Salyev Bayev says, my favorite chair is that chair, uh, which I'm using for studying. It's very comfortable and I don't get a backache after using it. Yeah, students, there's, um, with chairs especially, uh, I think we covered this uh, word once when we were, uh, doing a part two talking about shopping for a new bed it starts with an er this word um if you can uh, think of this word that's fantastic okay vocabulary is also important for band nine there's sanjay m sanjay m says yeah it's an ergonomic chair okay very good yeah ergonomic means that um, it is designed to accommodate your uh, body, so your body movement, so you don't end up with a backache or with different kinds of physical problems, okay? So very good, Sanjay. Uh, ergonomic chair, okay? Very good, Caroline. I see that you came up with it as well. So uh, when you're buying uh, certain products like a chair, a desk, your keyboard, your mouse, uh, you should be looking for ergonomic products that are designed so you don't get um, a sore wrist after using the mouse or you don't get uh, sore fingers or arms using your keyboard, sore back using your chair. Uh, so ergonomic, yeah. Very nice. Mohammed says, my favorite chair is the chair in my room because it's directly in front of the TV and it takes me, makes me more comfortable when I watch the tube from this chair as well when I read stories. Okay, sure. Um, my go-to chair is my manager's chair in my office. Not only is it a comfortable chair, um, with an elegant leather cover, but it also has an ergonomic design with lumbar support. And so I can sit in it for hours and not get a backache. In fact, I used it for more than 12 hours just yesterday to study for this exam. And when I finally got up, I still felt like a spring chicken. All right. I thought I'd give you something a little humorous here with my idiomatic language. Uh, very useful, though, very natural. Here we go. Uh, repeat after me. Which is your favorite chair and why? My go-to chair is my manager's chair in my office. Not only is it a comfortable chair with an elegant leather cover, but it also has an ergonomic design with lumbar support, so I can sit in it for hours and not get a backache. In fact, I used it for more than 12 hours just yesterday to study for this exam, and when I finally got up, I still felt like a spring chicken. All right. So again, I'm showing you band nine here. Okay. So band nine means you're being fluent. You're able to uh, control and use idiomatic language. Uh, lumbar support, by the way, if anybody is wondering about that, 
uh, your spinal cord on, in your back, the bones of your back, they're separated into different regions, okay? Uh, the region uh, in the neck, the cervix, okay? And the region in the bottom is called the lumbar. So the lumbar is the lower back. That's right, Abhishek, the lumbar, okay? Uh, go-to uh, chair, Ranjit, when you say it's my go-to, it means that it's your top pick, okay? So uh, lumbar... is lower back, okay, and um, go to uh, means my first pick, first choice, okay, so keep those in mind, okay. All right, let's jump a question here and go to this one. A little bit more exciting than the previous. Um, here we go. Uh, have you ever broken a chair? How? I'd love to hear some stories here. I'm sure some of you have some funny ones. Okay. Um, so Yara Bisha, don't preload your answers. It's okay to have them. Okay. But make sure you stay with the question that we're tackling. Okay. Here we go. So this one, have you ever broken a chair? How? And here, look at the present perfect. Make sure you're answering. Um, with present perfect. So light side, the way you want to answer this is yes, this has happened to me. Uh, when I was a child, um, I hung it on my, I hung out on my father's office chair and it broke. Now we remember it with laughter because it was a very funny situation. Okay, light side, good. So you broke your father's office chair. Maybe you were spinning in it a little bit too much. Okay, or you were racing your friends with it. I've done it. Okay, we were all children at one point. Justleen says, my office chair is my favorite one. It's super comfortable. It's the best one for sitting in for long hours. Also, it was a gift from my company. Justleen, that's good for the previous question. Okay, Kumal says, no, not really. Okay, Kumal, even if you give a negative answer, like no, not really, you should explain. Okay, so no, not really. I've been really fortunate. Um, I'm careful when I'm sitting on chairs, and I'm a fairly light person. I only weigh about... 60 kilos, so um, I'm not so heavy and chairs don't usually break under my weight. And I'm very careful, I check the chair before I sit in it so I don't sit in old uh, rickety chairs, okay? So even if you say no, not really, Raj or Kamal, you have to be fluent, okay? If you just say no, not really, they're not going to give you a good band score unless you're able to prove your fluency later on, okay? All right, sweet, sweet says, yes, I have broken a chair. Uh, when I was a child, I played with my chair for a couple hours at my relative's home. Uh, the chair was re really expensive and I felt very embarrassed. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sweet, sweet. That happens. Uh, hopefully it wasn't like a really expensive antique chair from the Ming dynasty or something. All right, um, An says, yes, I have. A month ago, I had broken uh, one of my dining room chairs as I was running around because my brothers were chasing me. Suddenly, I fell on the ground and the wooden chair broke. Okay, good, An, yeah. All right. Uh, Ishrit says, yes, it happened me with me once um, when I jumped on my really comfy and favorite couch and it just broke and it actually was quite painful. Ooh, Ishrit, I'm sorry to hear that. Now, that's a couch. That's not a chair. So make sure you stay on topic. Um, yes, I have. I've had a couple of embarrassing moments uh, breaking lawn chairs. Some of these are just made of cheap plastic. And one time when I was at my uh, friend's house, as I sat down, the chairs legs broke and I fell on my back and spilled 
red punch all over myself while the others laughed I was quite upset and threw the broken chair over the fence. Okay, so have you ever broken a chair? Uh, how? Okay, again, present perfect. Notice how I'm using present perfect twice. Uh, right away, very quickly. Yes, I have. I've had a couple of embarrassing moments breaking lawn chairs. Uh, some of these are just made of cheap plastic. And one time when I was at my friend's house, as I sat down, the chair's legs broke and I fell on my back and spilled red punch all over myself while the others laughed. I was quite upset and threw the broken chair over the fence. Okay. Uh, I didn't see anybody else with uh, breaking lawn chairs, but I'm sure there's a few of you out there who've had similar experiences breaking lawn chairs. So that's using present perfect, okay? Uh, here's a question you can try on your own. If you could buy any kind of chair, what would it be? Again, here you have a conditional, so you should use the conditional. The examiner is really paying attention to the grammar that you're using um, for your answers, okay? All right, everyone, great participation in today's class. Now remember, that you can practice your speaking on our websites with other students for free. And I highly encourage you to do that. AEHelp.com for academic IELTS and GIELTSHelp.com for general IELTS. Tomorrow, I'm going to start a new task too with members. Beck John, that's gonna be the one that you asked for. I haven't forgotten. And then we'll do a listening part one and two practice with everyone right after. Nice participation, everyone. And Keep in mind to use English in these classes. These classes are for you. They're free of charge. It's your chance to really just get some good English practice in there. So uh, make sure to do that. Again, visit us, ahelp.com, glshelp.com for lots more help. Spend a couple dollars. It's worth your investment um, to get those high band scores. You're very welcome, members. Great participation. Thank you for your membership. Bye, everyone. I'm Adrian signing out from Central Europe for now. See you tomorrow.